Hello to all of the subscribers of the Global Energy Association and welcome to a new series of our chats with people who have just joined our Committee of Trustees. I'm very glad to say that uh, we have internationalized our Committee of Trustees. We now have the representatives not just from Europe and of, uh, from Latin America, but also from Africa. And I'm joined today by Abdel Diatella, Director General of the Association of Power Utilities of Africa. Hello, hello Mr. Tella. Uh, hello, how are you, Sergei, this morning? Well, uh, I should say warm greetings from you, to you from Moscow, but it's minus 21 in Moscow, so it's relatively warm, but we'll be talking about global warming inevitably. Yes. Uh, now, before we start talking, I, I should explain to our viewers that we met in South Africa, and since we met, I thought that it's of paramount importance that you join uh, our, our, our trustees, but tell us more about yourself. I'm sure other members of the committee are also watching. Okay, um, thank you. Um, I'm, uh, like you said, um, the Director General of the Association of Power Utility of Africa. I'm, um, by training, I'm electrical, electrotechnical engineer. I uh, finished my training, first basic training in the Moscow uh, Energy Institute. And uh, after that, I have uh, one master of uh, engineering, another master in renewable energy, and uh, another master in uh, energy uh, business administration. Oh. And uh, I therefore continue with uh, a, a master in uh, ultra high voltage uh, installation in France. And uh, later on, I went uh, to uh, uh, a specialized master course in renewable energy in 85. That was very early for people to understand. And we create after that the first regional solar energy center in Mali, Bamako in 86, because I have been graduated in 83. I left in Moscow in 83 after seven years of life in Moscow. And I finished uh, around, uh, let's say, uh, 10 years of uh, high school engineering and postgrad uh, courses. That's a very impressive CV, but you haven't started with the essentials. What's your native country? My country is Benin. I'm from Benin, Western Africa. And, uh, and the association is based in Ivory Coast, Côte d'Ivoire, right? Yes. I work 25 years for the Electricity Corporation of Benin, the National uh, Electricity Utility, Power Utility. After 25 years in uh, Benin, I joined uh, the Association of Power Utility of Africa in 2008. Yes, and we met in South well, Africa, in Cape Town, I, several months ago. I have been some 12 years on a position of head of uh, African Power Utilities Association. Okay, now that you've explained a thing or two about yourself, let me also explain my logic of why I wanted you to be on, on the board of trustees of ours. And my logic is rather sad. Uh, that is to say, the association is duly proud of all of the winners from uh, Europe and from the United States, from China these days. But we certainly lack nominations and winners from the developing world. Although quite often the fate of the world is being decided in the developing world. And I say it wholeheartedly because I'm someone who was born and grew up in the developing world. Despite my Russian name, I grew up in Latin America, in Cuba, Uruguay and Ecuador. So I think this must be resolved, but there is a major obstacle. Uh, well, I joined uh, the association myself a year ago, and I've been looking at how the association works, and there is a major obstacle. When people from the developing world get nominated, we have a very transparent, a very good, I, again, wholeheartedly supported system of three independent um, experts who look at the nominations. And the first thing that these independent uh, experts look up are Hirsch Index publications and generally speaking publications in the academic journals all over the world, uh, which is trivia for most of people from Europe and from the United States, but which is not necessarily 
so readily available for good specialists in the developing countries. Do you face this, do you face this problem in, Af in Africa? Yes, uh, many um, African experts are working in international uh, um, scientific in industrial uh, um, gathering association and uh, high academic level. But uh, th there are some publication when the publication is made in partnership with the uh, 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 Western, uh, uh, I mean, uh, partners, uh, they can publish in relevant uh, uh, scientific uh, platform to be known. Sometimes when it's published only in Africa and this university or, or component institute have not partnership with another uh, global uh, well position institution. This like Scopus or like Web of Science for that matter. Yes, yes. Those publications are not known. But some work are being done in Africa. We published uh, two, two years ago, 2019, the Atlas of Energy Resources in Africa mm -hmm. is a very huge work covering all 55 countries in Africa, all energy resources. And this we done with the uh, um, United States uh, Environment uh, 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 the, uh, uh, Commission and the African Development Bank. And I work with this with uh, the University uh, of Washington and we public each, uh, uh, I mean, in French and English, we have more than 300 pages work. So this one is available on African Development Bank uh, uh, energy portal, but maybe it's not known because uh, for all uh, uh, organization, but to say that some, some scientific work are being done and then at my level, I participate uh, in various uh, study and uh, publication uh, every year that uh, for now we are working on the uh, African single electricity market uh, where I'm uh, uh, working scientifically with uh, the Af European Union uh, technical uh, team uh, to uh, frame the uh, single electricity market in Africa. Well, thank you for that answer. And it actually contains a piece of advice because we've, we've been also thinking of maybe uniting our efforts, uh, combining our efforts with the universities in places like Latin America, like Africa, like remote Asia, with the developing, uh, with the corporations of development. And by producing such reports, we could uh, firstly encourage the scientists to write more and then make them recognizable, instantly recognizable for for our independent uh, experts. That, that's the way forward. I think uh, our tactical team will be getting in touch with you to learn more about it. Uh, now that we have discussed the basics, um, let us encourage African researchers to, put, to get nominated um, uh, for the prize. I must explain to those of them who are watching us that self-nomination is not allowed in global energy. So they must, they might, they must be appreciated by someone else, but I think this is uh, totally uh, achievable. If you're a good expert, a good researcher, you are, of course, appreciated by, uh, by, by your colleagues. Uh, my question is, uh, what examples of interesting works, of interesting scientific breakthroughs in Africa uh, can you mention now, now that we're talking about nominations? Who could be nominated? Maybe not who, we, we, we would be uh, not, not objective, but what? I mean that the work being done now on the promotion and the footprint of uh, renewable energy in Africa is noticeable because uh, the African are saying, okay, we have uh, the very huge uh, energy potential, despite we don't have a good access to energy everywhere. So many uh, uh, scientific work are doing now to have a least cost development of energy sector in, in, in many countries. 
So technically, technologically, a good job is being done to have a better and less cost equipment. Those are done with the industry partner and the university partners. So those issuing are relevant to be, some of them are even a new, not invention, but a readaptation of existing technology to fit the continent. I think this can be a good point. We are talking about electrical vehicle. Do you know that uh, lastly, Uganda, Ugandan new technical team have the first electrical vehicle working already. In Morocco, we have a very, very good renewable energy laboratory who are in experiencing new form of housing to be more efficient in energy, very cheap in construction and very reliable on, I mean, uh, long lasting uh, uh, houses. Those are some not invention, but research for development. So we have to look into research and development feed to capture what we can present. This is absolutely conceivable because I should have explained it to the people who don't know a lot about, uh, about our price. Now the price has three nominations, conventional energy, non-conventional energy, and new applications of energy. And that's precisely what you're talking about. So they would fit in. And also quite a lot of people, especially the developing world, but everywhere, complain that scientists do not get uh, all of the money they deserve. Now, the fund uh, of the prize stands at the moment at 39,000, uh, excuse me, 39 million Russian rubles, uh, which is uh, roughly 550,000 US dollars. It's a lot of money. Uh, so it's worth, uh, it's worth getting uh, nominated. And uh, thanks to that money, people can continue their, their research. So I hope we'll see uh, new nominations from Africa. And please, 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 I actually ask you as a new member of, of our board of trustees to spread the news and to encourage people to nominate their colleagues in the current cycle, which started on the 1st of December. And they have at least three months more to present, uh, to present uh, their, their, their work. Uh, I'm actually looking forward very much to seeing more and more African nominations. It doesn't mean, of course, that they will automatically win. Uh, we had a very impressive shortlist last year. And uh, if, to give you an example, one of our uh, winners last year was someone who had received the Nobel Prize. So it's, it's a high level of things, but especially as far as the new applications are concerned, I think we have a very good horizon there. And I'm very much looking forward to getting more African nominations and maybe uh, African winners. Now that we have discussed that, I don't want our first conversation to be too long. I just want people to appreciate our new connection, but I will ask you an additional question uh, because it's being discussed all the time here, uh, especially here in Europe. Uh, the European Union countries, uh, well, we certainly envy them because they say we want to have clean energy. Uh, typically, they speak about it because of the CO2 emissions and we want to go green, etc. And God bless. And God bless. Uh, yet, uh, what uh, they oversee, overlook rather, is the fact that... Uh, say electricity produced uh, on new green technologies is typically more expensive than the electricity produced on gas and, and coal and, uh, and, and oil. Gas, I mean natural gas, of course. Uh, so even in Europe, it's difficult to come to a average taxpayer, average pair, average consumer and say, in order to save this planet, you will have to pay a double or a triple price for your, uh, as far as your electricity bill is concerned. Uh, I'd imagine this is even less conceivable in Africa. But I'm not going to say uh, put a cross on the renewable energy, and I'm not going to be a uh, brainless advocate of traditional energy. Things are moving, things are being moved. But where is the golden standard, do you think? 
uh, what's, uh, what's to be done so that we do have sustainable developments, we do not destroy existing uh, jobs in energy sector, and we create a stable energy sector which could contribute to sustainable developments. Where is the golden standard? Um, thank you for this uh, uh, topic. In fact, uh, before you promote a good uh, a policy of renewable energy, you may have base load. If you don't have base load, you go renewable. A part of hydro and uh, geothermal energy, all other energy, renewable energy are intermittent. If you don't have base load, you invest, you have your kilowatt hour very expensive and you not solve the problem. So the approach in Africa is a hybrid approach. We have now clean energy like gas. Gas is a clean energy. Not we have uranium, but we are not developing in, in, in any country yet enough uh, 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 nuclear power. But if we, we, we are now putting a hybrid approach where we have uh, uh, so, uh, uh, solar, enough solar, wind, even with some uh, uh, hydro station, we put solar panel. When you produce in a day for the six or seven hour good radiation, you produce your solar energy and you put your foresight or hydro order in the night shift, you are coming to a very good kilowatt hour price and you are putting your installation more reliable because you don't have a lockdown because of intermittency you don't and also grid stability stability renewable energy is good but you may not afford to put in instability your grid so the combination between uh, 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 um, some conventional and renewable energy is the good approach that we are developing today. And this one, even in some country, we have now a connection is a prepaid meter, a roof solar panel, and a network connection. When the network is good, you receive from the network when you have problem in the network, you are the producer and you can receive some money at the end of the day from the, your distributor because you produce more solar to feed the network who have deficit. This one is taking a very good, uh, 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 I mean, commitment of the community. They are feeling themselves part of the business. So to finish the hybrid approach should be our next step for Africa. Don't go only uh, a conventional, don't go only uh, a renewal, stay in combination and we can have a, a solid system in Africa. Well, I think there's so many things for us to talk about. Uh, so let's make, let's make a preliminary agreement. Uh, first of all, I promise uh, our subscribers that in the nearest future, we'll continue talking to new members of our board of trustees. We also have Julio Maria Sanguinetti, who is the former president of Uruguay, representing Latin America. Uh, also, we've just been joined by Peter Wilding from the United Kingdom, uh, whom a lot of you know because he's the inventor of the word Brexit. Uh, so we'll talk uh, to him. But also, and I want to say that publicly, although we could... Uh, in theory, with Mr. Teller discusses uh, of the records, but I want to do it on the record. Mr. Teller, let us uh, organize sooner rather than later a nice webinar. Well, these days, unfortunately, you can't meet in person with yourself, with several experts uh, from, from Africa. Let's discuss what we've been discussing during the last five minutes. And let's try to do our best to promote uh, our prize so that we see more African nominations because Africa deserves it. So uh, you've been nodding, so I understand that you agree. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so Mr. Seller, thank you so much indeed. Once again, welcome to our association and the Board of Trustees. And, uh, and let's talk. Let's continue talking. Oh, the pleasure is mine. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Goodbye.
Bye.